Step two of the budget process is estimating costs. This lecture looks at how we do that and discusses some very basic accounting. Let's start with the startup costs. These are the costs to just get the business ready to open the doors. Most of the time, they are incurred only one time. Sometimes these costs have to be incurred again as the business continues or grows. For example, you may need to replace equipment that gets worn out or add additional equipment to meet growing sales. Some common examples of startup costs are lease and utility deposits, renovations or build-out costs, equipment and furniture, IT systems, your initial inventory if you will have inventory, legal fees, license and permits, marketing, training employees. But every business is different, so think about what you're going to need for your business. Do Google searches for typical startup costs for your business, or talk with someone who has started a similar business. Another good resource would be a CPA with experience in the industry because they have seen many typical financial statements for those types of businesses. So what is an asset? These are resources that are owned or controlled by the business. They have economic value or help produce income. They can be tangible, which means physical and that you can touch them or intangible, meaning they're not physical and you cannot actually touch them. They can be converted into cash. And there is something of value that the company expects will provide future benefits for more than just one year. There's also an accounting convention that says anything $500 or over, we're gonna consider it an asset because theoretically it can be converted into cash. Anything less than $500 is just a cost and it won't produce future benefits. And we also don't want to clog up our depreciation schedule or our asset list. Here are some examples of assets. Cash, that's in the business checking and savings. Accounts receivable, which is money that is owed to the business from its customers inventory, equipment, furniture and leasehold improvements, websites, initial expenses that provide benefits for greater than one year. These are like attorney's fees to set up the business. Some of our startup costs are assets because they're expected to provide future benefits for over a year and I've labeled my example startup costs. Initial inventory for my coffee house can't be used for over a year because it would spoil. Legal fees to start the business are typically over $500 and provide benefit greater than one year because we are anticipating being in business more than one year. License and permits usually have to be renewed every year. Marketing and training employees usually lasts for less than one year as well. Then there are recurring costs. These are costs that occur more than once. They usually recur monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or yearly. They go on the income statement in the expenses section. Examples include rent, inventory replenishment, wages and insurance, taxes, marketing and advertising, credit card processing, supplies, repairs, utilities, just to name a few. Here's our list of startup costs again, but now I've classified or labeled the recurring costs. Remember this slide from our sales forecasting lecture? I'm using the same example so we can build on it further and demonstrate how we apply these cost concepts. Here are the startup costs I think I'll have for my coffee house. I'll have a lease or rent deposit, $7,000, and that's an asset. 
I'm going to have to make some renovations or build out this place I'm renting. And I think that that's going to be $15,000. And I've classified that as an asset. I'm going to buy or lease some equipment. And I think that's going to be about $25,000. And this equipment becomes my asset. I'm also going to need some furniture like chairs and tables. And I think I'm going to spend about $10,000 in that. And I'm going to classify that as an asset. I'm going to need a POS system. That means point of sale system. That's how I'm going to keep track of all my sales and get paid by having customers pay me through credit card. And that's going to run me about $5,000, and that's also an asset. Then I'm going to have to buy some initial coffee and baked good inventory. And I think I'm going to need $31,500 of that for my first month. So I'm going to have to buy that ahead of time so that when I open my store for the first time, I have coffee and baked goods to sell. And that's going to be recurring. And that's going to be an expense that shows up on the income statement every month as cost of goods sold. License and, and permits are going to be a startup cost. Marketing and advertising, I'm going to spend $2,000 a month, and that's going to be recurring. My security system is going to be $2,500, and that's an asset. I'm going to have tech set up of about $5,000, and that's going to be an asset. I'm going to have to train employees, which is going to run me about $2,500, and that's going to be in startup costs. Legal services are $2,500, and that's going to be an asset. Utility deposits are going to be $750, and that's an asset. And I'm also going to have this contingency fund here of $68,802, and I'm going to classify that as an asset. As we get further into our discussions, I'll describe how I came up with that $66,802. But for now, just know that I'm planning on a contingency fund. So my total startup cost for my coffee house is going to be $176,052. Now, getting back into the contingency funds, this is a cash reserve to fund the business in case revenues fall short. It's my safety net. Good business practice is to have at least three to six months of expenses and reserves. But this depends on the industry and the business. A high sales volatility business will need to have more in cash reserves because sales are highly volatile. You can't rely on them. My coffee house example includes one month of expenses and startup costs with the expectation to build the contingency fund to three months worth of expenses before I start taking a salary. Using my coffee house example, I'm building out the income statement we started in the sales forecast module. Notice I have my revenues right back at the top that you saw in the other lecture. And then I've listed out all of my expenses. Remember, I've got the cost of the coffee and baked goods. Because it spoils, I'm gonna to have to replenish it every month. My cost of coffee and my cost of baked goods. Remember from the previous slide, I told you I was planning on selling 7,200 cups of coffee. I've calculated that my average cup of coffee is gonna cost me $2.50. So when you multiply 7,200 cups of coffee by $2.50 cost per cup, you get 18,000. Also recall from that previous slide that I was planning on selling 5,400 baked goods. I'm also estimating that that cost is going to be $2.50 per baked good. So when I multiply $2.50 times 5,400 baked goods sold, I get $13,500. The cost of coffee and baked goods stays consistent over all 12 months because my sales are consistent. If I, my sales were to go up or down, the cost of that coffee or baked goods would go up or down accordingly. Then I estimate that my employees are going to use consumables. This is just things that they would use within the coffee making process. 
And then I'm going to have consumables used by the customers. That's going to be the coffee cups, the papers to wrap the baked goods in. Then I'm going to have to have a website and a domain and all that site maintenance. I'm estimating is going to cost me $75 a month. Credit card processing fees, I've estimated at 3%. Remember, credit cards aren't free to use. Credit card companies charge the businesses on average 3%. So I've multiplied my sales by 3% to get my credit card processing fee. And again, those aren't consistent over all 12 months because my sales haven't changed. My rent is $3,500 a month. I'm also planning on some small equipment. This is spoons, pitchers, things like that uh, at $600 a month. Now my wages, these are non-owner's wages. So these are gonna be my employees. I'm planning on having two employees for every hour we're open. So I multiply two times 12 hours open times 20 days a month times $17.50 per hour. And then I've also multiplied it by 1.1. That extra 10% is for employer payroll taxes. So that's how I've estimated my wages at $9,240. You can see I've got some insurance costs here and I'm also planning on bookkeeping services. I figure it's gonna take six hours a month to do my bookkeeping times $50 an hour plus a $75 monthly charge for QuickBooks Online. So that's how I've computed my $375 bookkeeping. I've got repairs and maintenance and utilities. I've also dumped in my startup costs from the previous slide. Here's my $176,052 in startup costs. So my total expenses are $242,854 in month one but my revenues were only $77,400. That produced a net loss of $165,454 in month one. But as you can see in, in months two through 12, I'm gradually increasing my net income. You can also see that I've dropped my marketing costs starting in month four, and then again, I drop it in month seven. My logic behind this is I'm going to have to spend more in marketing as my business is new and I'm trying to gain name recognition and customers, so I'm going to have to spend money. But as customers get used to me being there and I can rely more on customer reviews and repeat business, I won't have to spend as much in marketing. But I also want to point out for the year I still have a negative $41,376 of loss. I'm operating in the red, or meaning I'm operating at a deficit. As a reminder, here's what we've accomplished and where we're going. So we've moved estimated costs and completing the income statement up to the accomplished block. Next, we're going to look at cash flow statements and cash utilization rates in order to get to our end goal, which is variances and strategy.